Um, okay, let's begin the briefing. Operator Eugene Solano, I'll be keeping you up to date. We've got news that an invading LASAP squadron has just taken off from the Puna Plains en route for an attack on our position, Aubrey Base. From their perspective, this attack is the final nail in our collective coffin. After all, this is the only base that hasn't fallen under their control. I guess we can consider ourselves lucky. It looks like the enemy has gotten a little overconfident and sent only a small attack force. Griffith Squadron, prepare for launch immediately. Fly around the mountains and avoid enemy radar. Oh, I forgot. The enemy squadron consists mainly of bombers supported by several fighters. Please protect this base and destroy the enemy bombers. If everything goes well, we should be able to get the upper hand on the enemy in this area. All right, please prepare for launch. Let's pay back the LASAP forces with at least one defeat. One final thing. During combat, my code name will be Crux. I will keep you up to date on the battle situation, so please pay attention to your radio.
The mission was, was a success. The destruction of the enemy bombers will help keep an enemy invasion of Aubrey Base at bay. However, we also suffered serious losses. They, there's no way anyone could ever call this mission a success. I'm sorry. I couldn't do anything to save them. So that's the super weapon Laysap used to take over all of Aurelia in only 10 days. Who could have imagined that they possessed such destructive power? Let this be a symbol of the fury borne by our countrymen towards Aurelia. Such was the impassioned speech of Laysath's commander, Diego Gaspar Navarro, as images of the Aurelian squadron's destruction over Cape Aubrey played in the background. A day later, his gravelly voice continued to echo through my hungover brain. October. One year after the cessation of the Democratic Republic of Laysath Civil War. After the Civil War, Laysath began to set their sights on their peaceful neighbor, the Federal Republic of Aurelia, claiming retribution for years of exploitation. The invasion suddenly began. With the ever-present threat of the cloaked airborne fortress, Glapnir, looming overhead, there was little time to react to the few concerns raised about the validity of the war. Such was the speed at which all of Aurelia fell under Laysath's control. Well, not everything has fallen into their hands, but it's only a matter of time. Looking out over the capital, Gaius Tower is both home to Laysath Central Command and the very symbol of its power. It was originally intended to be a symbol of Aurelia's peace. <laughs> How ironic. As I looked up at the sun traveling the same old path across the sky, the rays burned my tired eyes. Damn it. I just wish I could finish covering this completely one-sided war and head back home. I'll never get used to being in the Southern Hemisphere with its backward seasons. The Gleipnir was last confirmed heading southeast across the Puna Plains. However, we lost all trace of it shortly after. Unfortunately, Aurelia's information network can provide no further details at this time. We'll just have to take what we can get.